So in the last video, we talked about setting your working directory. And we also talked about the importance of setting your working directory every time you open up a new project or a new assignment in R. So on the back end, it's going to be really important to stay nice and organized with all of your R projects. So what I would suggest is that every time you open up a new R project, you go through these steps. So like we talked about in the previous video, the first thing you wanna do is check your working directory. I would suggest doing it down here in the console so that way it doesn't end up in the script area. So we're gonna check our working directory down here. Now I've reset this from the previous video, so this is my default working directory. So now we need to change this. So what I would do in every new script is come up here and say set working directory and assign to the working directory object. So these are the same steps that we talked about in the previous video. We're always going to do this in our new script. So remember, what we want to do here is we want to set our working directory and we want to put it in a brand new folder that's set up especially for this new project. So exactly with what we did with the previous video, what I've done is on my desktop, we have the R projects folder set up. I'm going to put all of my projects in that R project folder. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a bunch of subfolders for every individual project or assignment that I'm working on. So in this particular case, this is going to be our project folder. It's called my first R project. And what we're going to do is we're going to save all of our files as my first R project. So in order to get the file path, I double click on there. I go up to file, get info. I'm going to copy this file path, control C in quotations. I'm going to hit control V and paste it. And then I'm going to add on the actual folder I want to put in, which is my first R project. Okay. I'm going to run this. And then we notice here that in the console it's changed and the file path is now at my first R project. Now down here in the console, we don't necessarily want this in our code, but we can just check the working directory path one more time. And we notice that the file path here matches exactly to the file path that we established in the set working directory command. Now, if you remember that helpful little trick, we can assign the set working directory command to an object so we can call it in quickly whenever we open this file. So we'll call it working directory. We'll assign to it the set working directory command. We'll run it. Now we have the working directory object. Once again, we don't want this in the code, but just to check, we can bring up the working directory and we can make sure to check that this file path matches the original set working directory file path, which it does. Now, as time goes on, there are other ways of handling this. There are other ways that make it a little bit more conducive to working collaboratively with people. However, for the time being and being new to R, I'm going to suggest working this way so that way you're very calculated and organized with your file structures and working with R. So, so far, every time you open up R and start a new project, the first thing you want to do is check your working directory. Then you want to set up your working directory and set that file path directly to a very specific folder created for that project. And then you want to assign your working directory to an object called working directory. Okay, so we've opened up a new file. We've checked our working directory. We've set our working directory to a new folder. And then we've assigned that working directory to an object called working directory. Now that we've gotten all of that taken care of, now it's time to get to work on our project. If you remember from a few videos ago where we talked about writing and executing scripts, there were three pieces of code that we used. I've copied that code and I'm going to paste it here. So if you remember, the task was to assign the value two to the object X, so X gets two. Then we assign the value five to the object Y, so Y gets five. And then we sum the objects X and Y and assigned it to the object Z. So let's say that this is our project. This is what we need to accomplish. So we wrote in our comments and we have our code. I'm going to highlight everything and then I'm going to run our code. So now in the workspace, we have three new objects. We have X and it contains the value two. We have Y, it contains the value five. It has Z, it contains the value seven. So we've worked on our project. We're done with our project. Now what we need to do is save all of our files. Now, because we're working in RStudio, which is a GUI or a graphical user interface add-on to the R software, RStudio makes it really easy to save everything in one project file, which would be a .rproj file. It makes it quite convenient for us. However, it can be quite problematic outside of our computer and while working with other people. Now, RStudio is arguably one of the best user interfaces to work with. However, not everyone uses RStudio. Some people work strictly in the R programming environment. 
Other people work with other user interfaces. So saving files as RStudio projects can be convenient for us, however it can be problematic, particularly when we're collaborating with people or we're working on a different computer that doesn't have RStudio or something goes wrong with RStudio itself. So really the best practice or a convention that's best to follow is that we save individual files and we do this outside of the RStudio wrapper. Now when we do this, there's three important files that we're gonna save. The first is the script file, and this is arguably the most important file, the file that we generally collaborate with or share with colleagues. And we're going to save that as a .r file. Really what it is is just a text file, but we're gonna use the .r extension to save that. The second is our workspace. So we're gonna save the workspace as a separate file, and we're gonna save it as a .r data file. Lastly, we're gonna save our history, and we're gonna save the history as a .r history file. We could, but we don't necessarily need to save the output as a file because if we have our history, if we have our scripts, and then if we have our workspace files, we can easily recreate the output. Some even argue that it's not necessary to save a workspace file as long as you have your script file and you have your history file. However, we're gonna save all three. So we're gonna save the script file as a point and click, and then we're gonna use code to save our history and our workspace files. Okay, to save our script, all we're gonna do is click on this little disk to save it. And then it asks for a title. So the title, we'll just call it My First R Project. Generally, when I'm naming files, I like to either separate the words with capitals or I like to use underscores. So either way, you'll be okay. But I would suggest not putting spaces in any of your titles. And then we're gonna save it as .r. Now we have our file path, which is My First R Project. It's already set. So we don't have to worry about clicking or putting it anywhere. It's going to save it there automatically. So I'll click save. We notice up here that in the tab, it changed from untitled to my first R project. So this script is saved as the my first R project dot R file. So now that that's saved, I'm going to come up here into our script and I'm going to save our workspace. And our workspace includes all of the objects that we've stored inside our global environment. So in order to do that, I'm going to use the save dot image command. And then inside the parentheses, I'll put a set of double quotes and then we'll name our file. So I'll use the same file name I used for our script. I'll call it my first R project. And then we're going to use the extension R D A T A. So an R data extension. I'll run that. And then we have the saved workspace in our working directory. Okay, and the last file we need to save is our history file. Now this is an important file because it documents every command we've used in our session. And it's everything that's saved in this history tab up here. So in order to do this, I'm going to use the save history command. Now we notice it doesn't have the dot in between the two words. It's just save history. So I'm going to save history. And then inside the parentheses, we're going to do the same thing. In double quotes, I'm going to name it my first R project and we're gonna use the extension R history. Okay, so I'm gonna run that. And then now we have the history file saved in our working directory. So now if I pull up my R projects folder, inside the my first R project folder, we have our three files. We have the .r file, which is our script file. We have the .r data file, which is our workspace file. And then we have the .r history file, which is our history file. So the script file, we could just open this with a text edit. And we notice that all the contents in here match what was in the script editor. So really this is just the text file with all the code in it. The workspace file is really just a file that can be opened in either R or RStudio. And the history file, we can also open just with a text edit. And you see here that it's just the entire history. So if we click on the history tab, you'll see that it's just the text file with the history in it. Okay, so we saved the R script, we saved the workspace, we saved the history. Now, one thing I wanted to show you just as an example, we created the code save workspace and save history after we saved the R script. So as you're working, it's always a good idea to come up here, click on save and save the script as you go. So automatically when you click save, it'll overwrite the script file and then save whatever you have in there. And now it's grayed out, which means there isn't any difference between what's in your script and what's saved in the script editor. And the same goes for the workspace and the save history. We can always highlight this, run the code, highlight this, run the code, and it'll always save the file. So now that you understand what the workspace is in terms of saving objects, you understand what the history is, what I would actually suggest doing is to take this
and always put these things at the top of your code. So that way you could set up your files, have everything ready to go, and then as you work, you could just save as you go. So even just as I changed that, the save button became active again, and I can click on that and save it. Okay, so now that we're ready to close out of R, what I would suggest doing is clearing out your workspace. So the first thing to do to clear out the workspace is we can use the RM function. We could put in the list argument, type in ls with parentheses. If we run that code, it's going to clear out the entire list. So before, in order to remove just one object, we used the remove function and then we typed in the name of the object. Here we can use the list command to clear out the entire list. So we'll just write the comment here, clear workspace. So you could put that at the end of your code and then we could also clear out our console here. And then we already have our R project saved except for just clearing the workspace. So I could click save again to save our script. Now the reason why you want to clear that out is because when you close out of R and then open it again, the default is to automatically bring up the last workspace that you had active. I don't like to do that. I like to open up R and have it fresh, generally because I'm working between a lot of different projects with a lot of different people. Now what we can actually do, we could go up to our R Studio preferences and we can uncheck restore R data into workspace at startup. So what that's saying is it's going to restore the workspace at startup. You could leave that if you want. However, I don't necessarily like to do it. So I'm going to uncheck this. If you would like to, you also can. This one thing here, save workspace to our data on exit. So when we close out, it's going to prompt us. So just in case we didn't save it, it'll give us the opportunity to save without closing it out on us. Okay, so I'm going to click apply and then we can click OK. Now to close out of R, we could just use the Q command and I'll put it in the console because it's not anything I want to save in my script. I'll hit return. And then that prompt is going to come up, the one that I just mentioned, do you want to save your workspace? And we can click yes. So I'm going to hit return, and then it clears us out. Okay, so we just closed out of R, and then I just opened it again. How do we load all of this back into R? So let's just click the broom to clear out all of the R version information. First, let's load the script. We can go to File, Open File. We could just go into our Project subfolder and double click on the script. Okay, the next thing that we need to do is set our working directory. R will not be able to read any of our files that are in our working directory unless we point R to that folder. So let's just run the beginning code and now it's pointed to our working directory. Now we can start to load the files in. So let's load in the workspace first. We'll do load and then in quotes we'll type the name of the workspace file. So it's my first R project dot R data. Let's run that and we see that our working directory is now restored. Now we want to load our history. So let's do the command load history. And then in quotes, we'll load the history file. My first R project dot R history. And now we see that we have the history in. So now R is completely restored back to where it was and we're ready to keep working. Now just remember, as you go, you want to be continually saving your script, saving your image and saving your history. You don't necessarily want to delete anything as you go. You just want to keep it moving. That way there's a clear record of everything that you've done. And that's going to be really important for reproducibility purposes.